Hey guys, welcome to something uh, something new. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be showing you my uh, my finished 16-bit computer. As you can see, I'm on the uh, the RDF server, um, which is where I build most of my uh, most of my big creations. One second. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, this is going to be a, this is a 16-bit computer. Um, uh, these are the inputs down here. Uh, the A inputs on the bottom. The B inputs on the top. Um, over here, uh, this is where you can see all the different functions and commands. And on the firewall, um, we've got the turn on, run program, clock indicator, and the air. Uh, to clear functions, which is uh, just useful before you uh, start running a program. Um, I'll give you a brief uh, overview of what this computer has inside it. Um, it has um, 32, uh, no, two 16-bit sets of um, input registers, which are down here. I'll uh, just show you. These are the input registers, basically just default flops, which can be accessed by RAM outputs, LU outputs, and user inputs. Um, so there are 32 bits of that, so four bytes of input registers. Um, from the input registers, you can go into the uh, go directly into the ALU, which is here. The ALU has uh, 11, 11, th uh, 11 functions, I think, with um, uh, fully opcoded, so let's have a look. Which I know uh, opcodes are slower, but conserve space and not as much busing. So zero A and zero B, not A, not B, R, and C non XR, uh, add shift right and not out. As you can see, it's not a particularly uh, compact LU. Well, it's not bad. It's just from here to here uh, but it is quite slow because I decided to do the input side by side instead of on top of each other which is a bit stupid to be honest um, but once your function has been performed you can then uh, send the output into the RAM um, and I believe there are 64 bytes of RAM I think I've got 32 different addresses of 16 bits which is, I believe, 64 bytes. Yeah, 64 bytes. So uh, this uh, this great block here is 64 bytes of fully addressed RAM. Um, so you can send the LU output into the RAM, and there will be a, a given the option to read or write to any of these locations. Or, as you can see here, just using the glowstone, they can be serial bust back back down here and uh, then back into the uh, user inputs to perform another function so which would be useful like in a Fibonacci sequence or something like that um, these 12, uh, 12 lines here so start from here down here to over here have the, uh, the read, write, read and write RAM functions the fully addressed using a binary decoder. So um, that's reading, that's writing, that's reading, and uh, that's writing. So there, um, t uh, two sets of six bit, uh, yeah, six bit decoders to allow for addressing. Once we, um, once it's been uh, written or read from RAM. The uh, the outputs are here. One second, so I'm at the load. Sorry about the lag. Uh, the outputs are then joined together as they're, uh, they're separated here to conserve space. They're joined back together, where they can be a uh, where the bust round here. And um, from here, just using some muxing. Uh, yeah, muxing. They are. Can either be sent into the um, 
the GPU registers. Uh, the GPU registers uses um, a 16-bit X register and a 16-bit Y register. Um, from here, you can the functions to save to X and save to Y to give you coordinates. And then um, this here is the uh, fill X function. And this bit here is fill Y, so if you have two points, you can fill everything in between. And then, um, so yeah, onto the GPU. The GPU has obviously fill X, fill Y, save to X, save to Y, draw, and erase functions. It's a 16 by 16 pixel display, which is um, it's actually based on my noobs, um, my noobs GPU, but it's modified to, uh, to fit into here quite nicely with the draw and erase commands. So um, that GPU would be the last place that any information would go, except um, all this is a bit of a mess because I didn't really plan it. So uh, it's not very conserved space. So these like four or five lines here are all just different uh, buses. Um, so the uh, the outputs from the RAM or from the LU can then uh, can then go into this 16-bit binary display down here. Which is all very uh, very messy. This is my own uh, design of the 16-bit display. It's pretty re uh, pretty simple, really. Um, and that's about it, really, for the different functions. Um, I'll now go into program memory. There are let's have a look. I think there are 40 yeah 40 lines of program memory, so 40 lines of programmable code, and uses um, what I think is quite a nifty um, like mode or function um, function kind of setting, so on the yellow, using a binary number, so 0, 1, 2, or 3, um, you, uh, you choose the mode, so you, 0 is uh, input registers or user input, 1 is ALU, 2 is RAM, and 3 is GPU. And then um, on here would be the, um, is the different like arguments or the actual functions which you'd use. So at the moment it's using the user input, and it's using this function, the, the uh, function which corresponds to this, which um, then, using this uh, dmuxer here, is sent uh, either to um, so the user input on the bottom, um, the uh, what's next, the ALU commands there, and then um, the read RAM commands here, uh, or the write RAM commands here, and the GPU up here. Um, initially, it's just one set of RAM commands, but then this here, like a very small muxer, demuxer, sorry. Um, is uh, is used to so if this is off, it goes to read. And if it's on, it goes to write. So that's what this red line does. It chooses if it's uh, reading or writing. Uh, orange is just for user input. So write to user input A and uh, sorry, write to input register A and write to input register B, uh, depending on uh, what you're feeling like doing to be honest um, uh, just I have separate commands just for the input register so they can be accessed at any time because one slight flaw in um, this design is you can only uh, only perform one function per line but if I didn't do this my uh, my my program memory sorry would be uh, horrendously large and I didn't really want that so yeah so orange is um, Input registers red is reading or writing from RAM. Blue is the like the function. Yellow is the mode, and green, which I've got onto, is the go-to system. It's well, it is branching, but it's not conditional branching, so it's not particularly difficult to come up with. Just uses a basic binary system. So one will go to um, the next line. Two will go to two because this is like line zero this is line one line two and so on so one will go to line one 
two up left line two, three, three and so on and so on. Um the way this works is just if I was if this was on at the moment, um it'd start on here, then this number would go into the um D flops, D flip flops, sorry. And then on every clock cycle these D flop flops will be refreshed. And then uh, this will have the effect of like moving it on one. So that's how the clock works. Um what well, haven't I said? That's about it really. I'll probably now show you a yeah I'll um I'll show you a default program. Okay, uh I've just got it to um at the moment to run a program which will just add one add one and then show it on the binary display at the bottom. So uh in fact I'll just show you this uh, quite neat function. If I press turn on, this light comes on. And uh this is a clock indicator, so every uh, every clock cycle this will turn on. My clock is running on a um I think it's 40 tick full cycle or 30 tick full cycle. I can't remember. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's indicating uh, what happens. Now my uh, this run program function runs the program. Uh, sorry about the lag. As I go down here, so it's just adding one add one and then showing it on the display. So since that's one and that's two in binary, as you can see, one uh, briefly flashed. And show two. Um, I now wish I'd add RS null latches onto these so that they would show the output for longer. But I can't bother going to uh, change it now. As you can see on here, I left this clear, this uh, rev clear, so it'll just cycle back to the beginning. So I'll just show you this uh, this cycling through. So now, uh, now this is off. One is going through. And now next cycle two, next cycle three, and then next cycle four. And it should now show the output. So there you go. Um, that is my 16-bit computer. I'm yet to think of a name, so if anyone has any good suggestions, I would gladly take them. Thanks for watching. Please like, rate, comment, and subscribe. Hello, this is just a test to, uh, to see the 1080p function to see if it works. I'm just um, testing out this. Nothing very fancy really. Okay, that should be long enough.